West ProTube rep. We're here to talk to you today about a new kit that we put together. This is uh, the ProTube tying kit right here. This is uh, brought to you by the Fly Shop. It has everything that you need inside of here. We've been poaching out of this probably for weeks. Tying flies. Um, I've been getting the guys to really know this kit inside and out so that they can uh, better serve you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, zoom in here a little bit. We're going to kind of go over the bits and pieces behind this kit and what makes it tick. So we're going to bring our vise into play. This is a, uh, a Regal vise. Um, great holding power and uh, it's actually just a perfect piece of equipment for, for tying on. Um, the first thing we're going to bring into play, and this one is my personal um, needle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the camera to focus here. It does take a second. I apologize. Um, what I've done is this comes actually dead straight. And the reason for that, it looks really huge and monstrous on camera. But the theory behind it is it allows you to manipulate it as the customer. So what I've done is I took it and I put an L in it. And as you can see, it's holding nice and tight. It's not going anywhere. You can see that whole vise moving and it's got a big base on it. Um, as we start to get into the kit here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about the two different types of tubes that you're going to be getting. One is, this is called our Pro Flexi Tube. Um, you have about an inch and a half of tying surface and an inch and a half of junction tubing. These are injection molded, all as one piece. It takes the complete guesswork out of having to figure out do I have the right junction tubing for this tube or the right size bead? The thing with the uh, Pro Tube is every single piece that comes in this kit fits together. Right now I'm going to slide on, this is our Pro Flexi weight. This little copper piece right here, they come in a bunch of different lengths. Um, and that's going to add weight to your fly. If you wanted to add a cone, the cone fits right on. If you wanted to add a second cone, those cones fit on. Everything within the kit is designed to take the guesswork out of tube fly tying. And it does a great job of it. Now the second piece that we have here, for, for guys who like to tie, uh, say, bait fish patterns, smaller stuff like that, they don't want that thicker junction tubing, we have what we call the nanotube. And this is actually going to be a two-part system, but again, every single piece of our siliconized hook guide fits the nanotube. And again, it goes right onto our pin. So when ProTube went to design this pin, they, you know, everybody has a tube pin and you got to do all these eccentric things like you got to lock it in, pull it back, put pressure on it, and it still spins if you're stacking here. Uh, if you guys can see this, it's kind of hard to take off. But this is, you can notice the profile of this pin. It's a rectangle and our tube is round. So we're shoving round pegs around tubes onto square pegs. And what that's going to do, I can't get that thing to turn. And if you can, you're pretty much Hercules. Um, I can't barely get it back off sometimes. So without further ado, what we're going to do is we're going to walk you through actually just tying a really basic um, single stage steelhead fly. So what I'm going to use today is our uh, like our nanotube that we just had out. And I'm going to use our pro hook guide that comes with the kit. It happens to be black in color. The cool thing with the hook guides is that they come in every color of the rainbow. They're like Skittles. You could uh, change the whole look of your fly when you go to an orange hook guide. If the fish are really liking pink that day, you can go to a pink one. Clear, green, I mean I could go in on at nauseum for this. We're going to want this fly, it's going to be more of a low water fly, so we're going to add one of our shorter flexi weights here. So we get that into our into place there. And that also is adding a great amount of, you know, of, of a reflective surface into our fly. Um, thread that we're going to be using today, it's nothing special. Every fly shop, it's just a Danville 210. Um, and this is going to be just a really quick, very few stage, kind of a marabou uh, fly with a, uh, with a Raya collar actually. So this is uh, some hairline ice dub peacock black that we got here at the fly shop. And uh, we're going to be using a snazzy little uh, dubbing tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just a quick quick loop here. And I like to really make sure that the, uh, the tip of this, as you can see, is very tight. That's going to be able to let me have a really nice tight loop. What we'll do is we'll just uh, 
input our uh, thread into there as you can see. And we're going to take our dubbing. Obviously this is maybe a little bit too much. I got excited. I love that dubbing. So we'll go ahead, insert our dubbing in there, and we're just going to start spinning this. And I like to get it nice and tight, and you're going to see that dubbing ball start spinning. It goes right over the top of my finger, and that's going to add just a ton of strength to this fly. So we'll come in, we'll palmer this in just a hair. If you overlap, I mean, however you tie it in, it's going to look great. Um, and this is just kind of sitting there, just a little bugginess, and we'll go ahead and call that good because we do want this to be a little bit of a smaller fly. Come in, trim that off. Like I said, it's not going to rotate. I mean, I'm bending that thing all over the place. It, the tube's not moving. That's the best thing about this kit. So we come in, we're going to bring our bodkin in, and just start primping this out. Really just making this buggy. And with that dubbing loop, this is so strong, you're not going to, you're not going to be pulling you know, your, your dubbing ball off of the plate, anywhere. So at this point, what I'm going to do, and this may seem really counterintuitive, but I'm just going to throw a quick whip finish in there with my hand, trim this off, and uh, remember that gold tube that we, or the gold cone that we put on the front? This is kind of our, our, our cone. We're going to swing, swing this guy in. And the reason being is a lot of guys, you know, throw hackle in here, stuff like that. I think this helps support our hackles way, way better. So we'll come back in, start our fly off, and uh, we're going to grab a quick piece of marabou. This is uh, Select Marabou, also available here from the fly shop. And I don't want this to be too bulky, so we're going to uh, strip half off. We're going to kind of massage everything down. I'm sorry, it's probably kind of hard to see against the black background. But we'll start massaging all these fibers downwards. And I'm going to pull that back over itself. And I'm going to kind of wrap up this cone, actually. Okay, so that's pretty secured. We'll trim off that front section since it's not the most beautiful portion. And we're going to start palmering this in. And palmering is really just simply wrapping around. Uh, we're going to give it four or five turns and call it good because we don't want, like I said, we don't want this fly to be too bulky. Here we go one more on this guy. Get a good amount of profile. Marabou, I love this stuff. It has great movement in the water. It does have a tendency to collapse a little bit, you know, when it hits that faster water, especially if you're swinging a fly. So that's where that cone is. You see, no matter how hard I'm pulling that down now, when I brush that in, that cone's sitting there, and it's holding that profile, so it's going to look really smooth in the water. I'm going to come in, and this is a uh, this is called electroscale or lateral flash, I think. Um, this is a blue in color, and what I'll do is I'll just kind of I'm just going to throw a little flash in this fly. I don't really care if they're all even anything like that what I'll do is I'll just kind of put it in there so we throw in just a hair of flash and at the end here we can come in and primp now they look really smooth last but not least is a uh, really awesome feather that we're going to use this is called Rhea or super spay hackle um, available also here from the fly shop and when you look at it it's really thin and fine and what I like to do is I take this feather I grab about oh five to ten of the barbules and I just kind of start stripping it off and what that's going to do is going to create beautiful spacing on your fly. I have some that I've pre-prepped the right just about the right amount for this fly we're going to go ahead and tie that in and and kind of all this stuff that you're seeing up here don't worry about it we'll uh, we'll clean that up at the end so what I do is I just do a couple little wraps and I leave a little extra tag that I then kind of tie in so it's folded over kind of like I did with that marabou. So we're going to come in here and we're just going to kind of feel it out see what we want. Sorry my hands in the way it kind of just ends up like that. So we'll do I'm pretty happy with three wraps. So we're going to call it good at our third wrap here. It's got this is a great little single stage marabou fly. It's, as you can see 
doesn't take that long to tie. You can use a number of materials. If you're not into getting the Rhea or the Super Spay Hackle, um, you can use ostrich, you know, a big ostrich plume. But other than that, most everything is going to be available and really economical choice. So I'm going to go ahead and throw a few whips in here. And the thread color, at this point, it's not really going to matter. We're going to throw a, I throw a dab of, uh, just kind of in here haphazardly, I just throw a little dab of, uh, I usually use UV these days, and a uh, UV light, cure that up. And our last little portion here is going to be this little, this little cone head. And what that's going to do is kind of finalize our fly, builds it out, makes it look really sharp. The last thing that seems to have eluded me at this moment in time is a farrier starting device. So what we like to do is uh, at the end of our cone here, we're going to go ahead and trim this back and you'll see it. it's just going to be sitting at about an eighth of an inch and my lighter's hiding underneath the uh, some pile of fly tying materials here. And what we want to do is you're going to notice there's two portions to the flame. There's the orange and the blue. We just want to go into the blue portion and you can see that guy start melting back. I let it sit for a second and I typically will just push it right back onto my right onto the vise. That comes out and at that point you're going to have a killer spot you can fit probably up to about a 20 pound test mono through. And that's our fly. As far as the hook selection goes with this, um, what I tend to use, they cost a little bit more money, but it's going to be uh, it's going to be an owner SSW. It's a really sharp hook. It's great, uh, great, great hook. I can't say enough things about it. They don't bend out, um, even with big fish. So what I'll do here is I'll kind of take you through a real quick rig too of a tube fly. Um, some people are kind of mystified by that you know there's no hook in there what do I do how do I do it so kind of the kind of the cool thing is this is really really light line um, and it's also hot pink probably not my first choice for swinging a low water fly in clear water for steelhead but uh, for educational purposes I think it'll work um, so what I've done now is we have as you can see our, fly, our line coming right through the center of that fly. As you see it kind of uh, cascading across the screen. It's uh, very much so free roaming. And I'm going to move our vise out of the way here just so we can have a little bit better look. So what I'll do is I'll start, and I tell you saltwater knot. So that's a simple overhand knot or half of a double surgeons. I'm going to come through the eye of our hook. It doesn't really matter because it's going to ride whichever way you want it to when you stick it into that junction tubing. I'm going to come in back through there, as you see now, um, and if you guys don't see this and get it the first time or have any questions, there's a website called Animated Knots, and I think they tie with like uh, stuff they use to tie up, uh, you know, like a United States aircraft carrier, so it makes it really easy to see, and it's really cool. So I just kind of snug that all down, and I leave that little tag there. We trim off our tag end. And we're just going to let our fly gently slide back down. And we kind of just manipulate and push this right in there. It does take a second, but that's going to keep that hook riding just perfect for you. So when that fish grabs, boom, it's off. Your fly stays. And you've got them by the hook. This beautiful fly that you've taken your time to tie is going to stay nice and safe. And he loses all leverage points, which is a huge advantage of, flu of uh, tube flies. So if you have any questions, feel free to give any of the guys here at the, at the, at the fly shop a call. Be more than happy to answer all of your questions, get you set up. Thanks for watching. Matt Calise here, and we'll talk to you soon.